Hello everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day and a great new year, which is right when I'm posting this video. Today, I'm gonna be talking with you guys about the best side hustle slash job that you can start today and work towards this year. All right, so the side hustle that we're gonna be talking about or job is teaching a skill. And these skills can be anything. So you are the teacher, you find students, you teach them. That's what I'm defining this as. And so this can be a skill, so music, dance, art, um, sports, or it could be academic. So if you're really good at math, you could be a math tutor. Or writing, if you like writing papers, you could be an English tutor. Um, one that I have found to be really profitable just from researching is SAT and ACT prep. Just because if you're able to coach someone to get up 45 points on their SAT, that's thousands of dollars difference in scholarships. So people are really willing to invest in their um, children's future by giving them an SAT or an ACT coach. So that's something that you're skilled with. You can move forward with that. Um, yeah, and then language. If you speak two languages, you can be a language tutor. That's really big right now. Sports, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, for myself, currently I teach music lessons and I am really close to making that my full-time job actually. Um, and I've been teaching lessons for four, four years now about. Full-time for like a year. And before that, actually, I was a swim coach. And yeah, back in high school, I lifeguarded for a long time and I taught a uh, little bit of competitive swimming, safety swimming for like younger kids. Like if they fall in the pool, what do they do? I taught them that, so like life-saving stuff. And I was also a lifeguard instructor for a number of years. And for that, teaching the children, I was making $40 an hour at 17 years old and just into my afternoon. So I would work two after two hours in the afternoon and I would make $80, which is incredible for a 17 year old. So no matter what age you are, if you're watching this video, you can start doing these kind of things if there's something that you excel at. And as far as that topic too, if you are fairly good at something, you're probably more ready to teach than you think you are. Um, which kind of goes into my last video where you never really feel like you're ready until you start doing it. And I read this interesting um, kind of thing recently where if you read two books on a specialized subject, like two big books, so that could be astrology or um, electrical engineering or electronics, anything, you now know more than 99% of the world's population on that subject. So that means that you would have value in that subject now. So if you read two books about the history of race car driving, you now know more than 99% of people living the history of race car driving. And I know that is such an arbitrary example, but it's really interesting to me. So when I first started teaching music lessons, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. But then you gotta think back, someone who's just beginning, they don't know anything. So for music, I'll use this as an example. If you can play major scales, or if you can play basic pieces, or you have a really good theory foundation, you're pretty much ready to start teaching. So I don't know how that applies to other skills, but just think about that for whatever you wanna do. For myself, for swim lessons, I was a great swimmer and I knew the techniques and I knew the rules and whatnot. So I was a, equipped to teach that. Um, so now that I'm gonna, now that I've kind of defined what we're talking about, I'm gonna give you four very tangible steps to start doing this today and throughout the next few months. And I have one bonus step as well. So step one is we're gonna find our skill and um, understand that you're good at that. So I, um, for myself, that's music, or I'm sure there's a number of things if I really got creative that I could teach, whether that's um, creative writing, which I'd enjoy, and various things. If you're really good at dancing, you're probably, well, not even really good. If you took dance lessons growing up, you're probably better than all the kids in your community at dancing, and you might be ready to open up a dance studio. Or if you are um, really enjoy writing, and you were good at academic writing, you're ready to open up a, a clinic where you can help children or adults who are working on their own writing. Um, whether that's fiction or nonfiction, academic, non-academic, there's lots of options. So yeah, the first thing is find your skill. What are you gonna teach? Now, step two is we're gonna find a location. So in order to teach, we need to have a place to teach. So when I first started teaching music, I taught drum lessons and I had four, four to six students. I never really had a ton of drum students, but every Saturday afternoon, I would go to my university and I would go to one of the practice rooms, which was soundproof, and I would just set up my drum set. And for two to three hours, I would teach drum lessons right there and then pack it up and go. Right now, I teach piano lessons at the Art Center, which is located in downtown Anderson, where I live. And I have an incredible studio space there. And this is another cool thing. If you have something, 
government institutions, so like that's a government building, the art center, they are really, really accommodating to art like professions or anything regarding teaching. So I know that um, whereas we have like a music studio set up there, there's other rooms that are available for renting. So there's a theater company that rents it out and they teach acting classes. And then there's um, painting teachers that come over and they teach painting. And just, I think there's like public speaking classes that are held there and all kinds of stuff. So if you are looking for a location, look into government institutions or buildings in like your cities, because usually there's places you can go there. Um, also using your own home. And this is really cool online. This last year, as terrible as it's been, and we've all been in turmoil, it has kind of pushed us onto the internet more, which was cool in some ways because I've learned a lot of skills that I did not have before. So back in May is when um, Greenville, or no, Anderson, where I live, was shut down. Greenville was too, it's sitting next to us where I'm from. And I had just started teaching piano lessons, really, really getting into it. And I had 14 students at the time and I had to move all of them onto Skype, Zoom, or FaceTime, depending on what they use. And it was really challenging at first, but I learned quickly and adapted and I still do teach Skype lessons. Um, I only have three Skype students right now, but it goes very successfully and I'm able to teach them fairly well. Um, so if you have a skill that you think you would equate to the internet, there's lots of online tutor tutoring opportunities and whatnot. So going through this, our first step was to find our skill. Second step, brainstorm and find your location. Third step, we're gonna find an audience. And finding an audience for a lot of people is the toughest thing. You can be the best piano player in the world. You can have the best studio to teach in, but what do you do if you can't find anybody? So the best way to find people, I, I did flyers when I first started for drum lessons. So I put up flyers all around town and within a couple weeks, I actually had four, four or five students, which was crazy. People were calling me and texting me like crazy. And so that still works, believe it or not. Um, friends, friends are the best. Or if you go to a church or at work, finding friends who maybe have kids or they themselves have friends or family members who want to learn what you're teaching, that's one way. And social media is probably the best. So if you have Facebook, go on Google Docs or whatever you use to make your flyers and post it on Facebook and I promise you, your friends and family will be like, hey, that's really cool, or they'll share it with their friends or they'll recommend people to you. So those are the three best ways. Um, so now we have found our skill, we've found a location, we've found an audience and we've worked towards that. Now the step four is just time management. A lot of people don't realize how much goes into teaching a skill, it is very involved. So I probably teach for about 13 hours a week, but outside of that, I have to spend four or five hours a week just in preparation. So I think I have four or five more advanced students who are working on pieces that I can't just sight read through. So whenever I'm teaching them, I'll spend like half an hour before my lesson reviewing what I think we're gonna go over that day just so that I can play it confidently or I have insight to give them. So preparation and scheduling is very, very important to being a good teacher. And now, let's see, step five. This is the bonus step. So I currently take piano lessons from a guy in Greenville and he is a spectacular teacher. He's been doing it for 20 years. Um, for guitar, drums, um, just music in general, music production and piano. And I currently take piano and business lessons from him. And I was asking him, what do I need to do? Like, how do I need to be advertising myself to get more students? And he said, once you've established a studio, which I have, I have about 26 students. He said, um, spend your time just being the best teacher possible. Once you have a studio set up, don't even worry about advertising. If you can really invest into the students you have and get them to a high level as quickly as possible, they will be your advertisement for you. They will be so excited with where they're going. Um, their parents and their family will be so excited that they'll tell other people about you. And Brett was telling me that since he's been doing that, he currently has more students than he can handle. So you basically have to audition to take lessons from him now because he has so many people recommending him to each other. Um, and so for myself, he told me this in August and it really redefined the way I wanted to teach. Because before I had fun and I wanted my students to improve, obviously, but I wasn't really, it wasn't something I was super focused on or thinking about. They just came and I taught them and then they went home. Since he told me that, I was like, wow, it is really my responsibility as a teacher to get them to a really high level really quickly. And so I started giving them practice plans or when they got to my lesson, I'd be like, you didn't practice this week, did you? And I would say, well, this is what I expect from you the next week. And in our time, 
or in my time even, I would start thinking about my students when I wasn't teaching them. What can I do to get through to them? Or how can I teach them better? How can I be a better teacher? What do I need to do to get them to the next level? And just by thinking that way in the last, so that was in August, six months from then, from, it's been over the last six months, I've had more fun teaching and I've noticed my students get to a much higher level because I've just changed my mindset. And so it might not pay off right away, but over the next 10 years, as I continue to take my students to the next level, they'll recommend me and we'll see what happens. But yeah, for right now, that's gonna that's your step five bonus step. Focus on being the absolute best um, teacher you can be. So in, you know, in conclusion, all this is about a side hustle this year. And I'm giving you very tangible steps that you can start today. When I first started teaching drum lessons, I worked a full-time job and I was in school full-time. I just did it on my Saturday afternoons. It was between like two o'clock and five o'clock plus setting up and I made an extra, let's see, in three hours, $40, 120 bucks a week, 480 a month. That ends up being just under 6,000 a year. So in just your Saturday afternoon, if you have a skill that you can share with somebody, you could be making an extra six, 4,000 a year after taxes, which is incredible. And you'll find that it makes you, whatever your skill is, if it's something that you've neglected or forgotten about, it's something that you're gonna wanna dig back into and enjoy and it gives you value and purpose. Um, so for myself, making this full-time job, I, um, I've gotten to the point, and I don't wanna talk about very specifics, but I'm getting to the point where I'm making a living off of it. Um, I'll say a specific, around 1,500, just so you can know. That's working 13 hours a week doing it. It's around $1,500 a month. And that's something I hope to double uh, and triple, cause I'm only working 13 hours a week right now teaching. And so there's definitely room to grow in that. And so this is just, I'm not saying this to gloat. I really <laughs> don't want to, but I'm just encouraging you guys. If there's something that you're skilled at, go out and do it and start today. 2021 is gonna be your year to start your teaching side hustle. Um, so if you like this video or if it inspired you to do something, comment below and tell me what something that you wanna teach this year. And it can be anything. I didn't even talk about like finances or personal development. Those are really cool things. If you're skilled at that, find someone and tutor in that, or even find a job somewhere teaching, all kinds of stuff. It even gets me excited just talking about it. It really gets my ideas flowing. And I mean, even you could write out packages and sell them online for teaching a subject, or you can teach seminars, um, a masterclass, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, comment below and tell me what, if anyone watches this and makes it all the way to here, tell me what you're gonna be teaching in 2021. And even ask questions, I'm really happy to help this is something I've been doing, starting with swim lessons. I've been teaching lessons for the last eight years of my life and I've really enjoyed it and it's been very profitable for me and I hope it's the same for you. And if you like the video, like and subscribe and because I'm gonna be posting more videos about this and I'll be giving more hands-on information about how I teach or what I teach um, or how I engage specific students or teach different personalities, stuff like that. But sweet, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic new year.